Now let's put things together to produce a function that decomposes a list of numbers into a pivot tree, and then we can use flatten to produce the sorted list of numbers we want at the end. We'll start by writing smaller, the counterpart to the function larger that you've already written. Smaller will just follow the template for processing a list of numbers, or we can use filter. Here's following the template. Here's our template. Now let's write some examples. Here we have two examples showing what will happen when we both find smaller elements and when we don't. Let's add one more example for empty. Now let's finish writing our function. In the empty case, we produce empty. Otherwise, we want to keep first of LON only if it's less than or equal to N. Let's do that comparison. Let's add a conditional. If the comparison is true, then we want to keep first of LON. Otherwise, we don't want to keep first of LON, so we'll just include the smaller numbers from the rest of the list. Now we're done with smaller. Now let's use smaller and larger together to produce our decomposition function. We'll start with some examples. If we have no numbers, we'll end up with no pivots in our tree. Here's an example where we split up a list with three elements to produce the appropriate pivots. Now let's think about writing build pivot tree. We already know that build pivot tree isn't going to follow the template directly for a list of numbers. That's not the strategy we've chosen. One way to think about a useful structure is to think about the output data, a pivot tree. When are we going to produce no pivots and when are we going to produce pivots? Let's use that to define our appropriate con clauses. In one case, we're going to produce make no pivot, otherwise we're going to produce make pivot. Let's think about what the questions might be. We're going to produce make no pivot when we have an empty list. We're going to produce make pivot in exactly all the other cases. Now, what are the three things we need to provide to make pivot? Well, the middle value is the pivot, and that's going to be the first of our list. We know that Now we just have to think about what the other two halves are. There are going to be pivot trees, and we construct pivot trees with build pivot tree. Now what does build pivot tree take as input? It needs a list of numbers. For the left values, we need the numbers that are smaller than first of LON. For the right tree, we need the numbers that are larger. Fortunately, we have functions that do just that in both cases. Now we've completed build pivot tree following the structure of the pivot tree that we're trying to produce and using smaller and larger as our strategy for decomposing the input. Now let's run our tests and check that they all work. Unfortunately, they didn't. We have an infinite loop in our program. Let's think about why that is. Well, let's think about the numbers that are smaller than our list of numbers. Smaller includes less than or equal to. That means first of LON will be included in the results of smaller. So our input to build pivot tree isn't always getting smaller. Let's write our termination argument so that we understand what we did wrong. We want to exclude the first of the list because it's included in the pivot tree anyway. So we'll just use rest of LON. That way our list 
always get smaller. Now let's run our tests and make sure that we've removed the infinite loop. When we look at our tests, we can see the problem. We didn't have any tests that covered the else case in smaller, but we meant to. That's because we made a mistake in the condition because we didn't compare first of LON to N. We compared it to nothing, and that always produces true. Now let's run our program and see that our tests pass. There we go. Now let's combine our two functions, build pivot tree and flatten, to build quicksort. Fortunately, quicksort is a very simple function. It's just first we build the pivot tree and then we flatten it. Now when we run our program, all our tests pass. We did have to use the name quick-sort because quicksort is already built into intermediate student with Lambda. With this, we've seen another full example of generative recursion where we construct an interesting data structure and then we decompose that data structure following the template. It's the construction of the pivot tree that's the key idea behind quicksort, using the first element of the list to split the list into smaller and larger elements.